welcome welcome back to the tld project guys episode 23 it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be an amazing one gonna be a really 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 good one today we ha- i have um actually we have why did i say i don't know why i said i we have a special guest on today obviously like we always do um he is a uh, i guess a, a close acquaintance can i say a close acquaintance maybe a close yeah. friend i don't know we've been working for we've been working for a while um his name is tristan we'll get into him in a little bit here um uh, but as always guys go down in the description below um all of tristan's links to start all of tristan's links will be down below so make sure you go check out our guest um but i guess let's start it off marcellus tristan how are you guys doing today i'm doing I'm good fantastic. oh awesome Awesome, awesome, awesome. Marcellus, you didn't say your usual, your usual. See, that's the thing. I, I can't be <laughs> too predictable on here, man. I got to switch it up sometimes. You know, you got to be like Drake, man. I was getting too predictable. I had to uh, switch the flow up. But uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm ready to get it. Uh, I'm also excited to learn more about uh, esports and stuff because I used to be a big gamer back in high school, bro. Like hours on Call of Duty playing zombies um, and just, you know, doing a lot of team death match back in the day. Um, but I don't really play as much as I used to. I'm, I'm definitely going to get back into it. So I'm excited to see what Tristan has to say and everything like that. So mm-hmm. let's get it. Yeah, Tristan, I mean, go for it. Tell the people who you are, what you're all about. Um, give all the information you want to give out, my man. Yeah. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tristan Chambers. I've been in the, the esports scene for nine years at this point. Uh, I started out as a, a content creator on YouTube back in 2012, and the year after that, I created my own esports team, which I'm still the sole founder, owner, and CEO of. And then um, I've also been fortunate of, to work with other teams and businesses. Um, namely, I'm a staff member with the United States Esports Association, uh, a street team member for one of the biggest record labels in, in the rock industry and a couple of other uh fantastic things but you know jared Marcellus, thank you for for having me mm-hmm. i welcome. mean i i'll start off right away tristan um let, let's get right into it let's get let, let's have you give a rundown to the people that aren't familiar um yeah. what esports is so basically just just cool. give give that whole give that whole spiel if you don't mind so esports is competitive gaming you know it's a global sport and you know and, and there's multiple different games that people can compete in and, and make content within um whether it be call of duty halo counter-strike league of legends valorant fortnite if you consider that to be an esports title um and, and so really it's become this this big thing over the last i'd say I'd say over the last six or seven years, it's really become this big, huge phenomenon. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of a general idea of what esports is. You know, there's tournaments, events all over the globe, selling stadiums out, and um, you know, it's it's something special. I would say, hundred mm-hmm. percent. At least, at least for me, um, I've been in esports for about I think designing in esports for close to five years now. Yeah. Um, and for me, I saw esports as initially like a way for that casual gaming hobby to become a career, you know, for especially when it was in the start. Obviously, there's some skepticism around it. But for those for those hardcore gamers, they saw an opportunity to be like, hey, like, I know I'm good enough. Let me get signed by a team. Let me get a salary with this. Let me compete like I want to compete, you yeah. know, um, especially like early starting out. Um seeing this as a, as a possible industry to, to lay myself up in. Um, I saw a lot of opportunity in it as well, since it's such, it's in such an infancy. So um, that'll kind of transition into my next thing. How do you think esports compares up to traditional sports? So I think that there's a lot of different things now that compare traditional sports to esports. You know, I, I think for a long time, the industry was trying to stay away from that you know, and kind of be your own thing. But over time, you've seen some of the same sponsors as you would in traditional sports. Um, Obviously, franchising with, like, the LCS and now Overwatch and Call of Duty League. So I think, you know, there's there's kind of this merging, I would say, of traditional sports and uh, and esports. But I think 
what what's really nice it's kind of got a check and balance system to it is the esports community will thrash anybody if they do something wrong and then you know the traditional sports side is kind of getting used to this is the way that we need to handle getting into esports mm-hmm. 100% nice. okay um it kind of reminds me of bodybuilding in a way like obviously it's two different areas and stuff but they both have their own culture and their own like fan base and most people are like, is that truly a sport or not? And uh, I'm glad we got we got you on here, bro, because I got some questions for you. Um, so, you know, you, you named a few games. So if there was one game that you could play for the rest of your life, what game would that be? Call of Duty, easily. I've been playing Call of Duty since I was six years old. I'm now 21 for context. Um, so, you know, I, I, it's just I, that's the game of choice for me. You know, if I'm not playing Call of Duty once a day or something, then something feels wrong with the world. <laughs> hey, Call of Duty is where it's at, man. Like, yeah. if I want to play any game, it's going to be Call of Duty because you get to just run in and shoot motherfuckers' heads off and do your thing. And I'll, by the way, I want to let you know, Tristan, we do cuss on this podcast. Oh, that's there. perfectly fine. And, uh, so if you if you feel like going off about certain things, you know, you can. But um. Uh, but yeah, that was that was my question about about like you know like what game you would play for the uh, longest. But also like what do you do to like keep your your mind and and your your mental in shape uh, from playing video games like you know for hours at a time? And I know that probably like you know wears like your eyes and and stuff like that. So like what do you do yeah. to keep yourself you know uh, up to speed and killing it with your skills? So. I mean, when it, when it comes to the mental state, I mean, you know, some people are on social media know this, but I actually, uh, at an early age, was diagnosed with autism. So really mental stability to me has been thrown out the window for years, and I just, I just roll with it. Um, but for me, I watch a lot of, of shows on Hulu. I listen to a lot of music. Um you know, primarily, I think if some people can see him in my my background, I have a lot of posters for for concerts and Marvel and things of that nature. And so, I, I really um, kind of surround myself with things that I I grew up loving. I didn't read comic books as a kid, but more the the live action shows that they did. And then, uh, other th- I mean, other than that, you know, um, I just try to find little things here and there that that helped me uh, with that. Definitely, I would say eye strain, though, can be kind of stress. I mean, it's catching up as you get older um, because, you know, I'm the type of guy who can sit in front of my Xbox monitor and play for 20 hours a day uh, with, without any, like, care in the world. Um, you know, if I'm, like, live streaming, then, you know, cut that in half. But... Um, Otherwise, no, you know, that that's what I do to kind of keep the sanity, you know, for the most part. Yeah, I remember, like, from back in the day, I don't play Call of Duty much anymore because my main friend group, like, when I played Call of Duty were the guys yeah. I was with in high school. So ever since college, kind of went away from that, unfortunately. But I remember back in the day, like, I, I've totally been there, Tristan. Like, I've definitely been able to drop at least 12 hours on on a, on a day, you know, with yeah. no problem. I know how easy it is to just fully immerse yourself. And like those days, like, especially even just playing, like, even if you're on for an hour or two, like you say, like, if you, if you don't get an hour in or play it once a day, you know, it does, it, it does feel like you're, you're kind of, you know, kind of like well, not, not really clicked on. Well, even for someone like me, right. When I was in high school, I'd be playing till like 4am in the morning, knowing I have to wake up at seven, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, you're a machine. <laughs> you know or it literally be like you know because one of the things I did so very well was I would time you know when my parents are were gonna wake up and when do I expect them in my room so then I know for a fact if I just turn the tv all the way down at, at that time I had a tv instead of a monitor but I could turn the tv all the way down turn the brightness like maybe 25 percent and then just keep playing and then like the minute I hear you know, them waking up, just shut it off and run in the bed, you know. Um, <laughs> We've all been there. Definitely all been yeah. there. <laughs> at least in some, some way or some way similar to that, yeah. Yeah. 
Turn that game off. What you doing? <laughs> you doing that all night. <laughs> so Tristan, on this podcast, we mainly um, it's it's called TOD. So basically, what TOD stands for? Um, it stands for Triumph Over Defeat. So obviously, you're a CEO, your owner, your founder yeah. um, of your own organization, your own esports organization. So yeah. starting from the ground up, what experiences kind of molded? Um, I guess I'll say the name Awaken, Awaken Militia. Yeah. And- to what it is today Dang, um, I like what, name. what really what really you know were those moments that was like either hey this is what I want to do or hey maybe I'm second guessing myself here yeah so for me you know the the reason I chose that name in the beginning uh, was because my dad had served 20 years in the military and so for me uh, you know, I wanted something that could pay somewhat tribute to the military in, in some aspects, um, you know, and also just because at the time, mascot logos were, they weren't on the decline, but they all really felt the same, bear, you know, tiger, just animal looking mascot logos, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, not to say that those are bad or anything, Um but for me, it was, I wanted something that you could look at and say, that's fierce. And that's like something I should be scared of. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the reason I chose the name Awaken is actually in kind of a, a symbolic meaning, right? You know, when I got into the space, I wanted to give people an opportunity and I wanted to awaken, you know, pun intended, a new generation of, of esports or content creators. And so that, that was that part. And then, you know, the militia, I know that some people look at that, you know, in bad, you know, a a bad perspective, given how the world's been over the last couple of years, Mm -hmm. but a militia at its core is a group of people who are fighting for something they believe in or fighting with each other. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, overall, that's what led into the name. And then we had a really great designer, uh, Dace Designs and Derek and, he came up with this really awesome logo and, you know, it's been with us since, you know, we had him making it and I, I truly love it, but that's, that's what really, you know, started Awaken was that ideal of giving people a place and opportunity, you know, where they aren't overlooked and that they know, you know, even for an example, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know a lot of owners or, or CEOs out there who, our owners, but then also content creators at the same time and, and have been doing that for so long. Mm-hmm. So when, like, can you name a moment um, in like, I guess, Awakens timeline where um, either the company or the organization has experienced a major setback or can you name a moment where your company has experienced a major like leap into, I guess, achieving the goals that you have set for it? Yeah, I think on on the side, uh, I'll answer both of those because I think okay. that those are both great questions. I think a r- great, you know, leap that we've had is, you know, for an organization of our size, we managed to do certain things that most wouldn't be able to do. You know, in Overwatch contenders, we played against Immortals. Um, you know, we've been to, I, I think, every one that we had in League of Legends, both internationally and here in in North America, we went to a playoffs, you know, mm-hmm. I, you know, I remember we did upsurge one time and we got first seed in the playoffs. We got upset, but, you know, it's like, what, you know, what do you expect? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you know, I, I would have hoped that we'd done well. Um, I think a couple of times we came close to getting premiership for CSGO in, in the UK, which would have been really awesome. Um, I think one of the defining moments for me was um, when we hit five years, right? Because I'd seen a lot of orgs that would die after one or two years and at least five years in for me, it felt like, okay, this is great. And then every year since then, I've just enjoyed it. I think setbacks, every org has their own setback, Um, Mm. you know, whether it's players or content creators leaving at, at not the most opportune time or internal issues that happened. 
um, or unnecessary drama. I think that there's a lot of different things, but I think what you know, going into the whole, uh, at least my perception of of triumph over defeat is not letting that harbor, you know, who you are, and not letting or not hindering who you are, and saying, okay, this happened. Let's not forget about it, but let's move on. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Hundred yes, percent. Hundred percent. So Tristan, since you, you know, you are the CEO, you are the boss, uh, you are the man with the plan. What what specifically do you look for when you're uh, you know, wanting to get a new player in your organization? Like, do they gotta have a certain kill death ratio? Do they gotta have a certain attitude? Like, what is the whole process? I think we're losing Marcellus for a second. Oh, <laughs> oh Marcellus, yeah. yeah, you cut out. You cut out. Okay, I see you guys freeze. I was like, oh, yeah, so my, <laughs> my internet connection is unstable. All good, all good. But uh, did you like? Did you kind of like get what I was saying and yeah. uh, everything? Yeah. So for me, it, it depends on the type of person you are. So say if you're a player, I look for. I I don't necessarily look at stats because. You know, stats aren't an indicator of who you are. Like on Call of Duty, for instance, like it, let's just say in the context of the player, I have a 1.3 KD. I can consistently drop 50, 60 kill games in pubs, right? Jeez. You know, I'm not, you know, stump crazy where I could drop 180 or something like that. But, you know, so for me, stats are really, you know, what I look for. If you're, if you're a player, let's say, you know, in any title, I mean, Fortnite's the one where I'm a little bit more subjective into stats and all that. Um, but with Call of Duty, Counter Strike, League of Legends, those types of games, I just look for players that want an opportunity who feel like they can be here long term uh, with with Awaken, and then you know, also have a great attitude, a great mentality, uh, someone that people respect. And then on the content creator side, I know this is going to sound crazy to some people but i don't look at numbers when it comes to content you know and picking up people you know i think that there's been this kind of disingenuous effort to say okay if you're not meeting my requirements you're gone or hey you know we we love that you want to join us but you you don't fit what we're looking for and that to me as a content creator myself i never want to do that to someone else because you know, I, I always look at it as what if I was in their shoes and someone told me that, how, how defeated would I feel? Mm -hmm. So I look at who you are as a person. I look at the quality of your content. I look at your personality. Sometimes if you're a streamer, I'll lurk in your stream for days without even, you know, (laughs) having it show up that I'm watching you. And, you know, that I think has done, are really good and then also one of the things that's really awesome is that we have a really great team of staff now that it's like hey i really love this person you know what you know what do you think about him i'm like make the move or we've had streamers recommend other streamers and you know we bring them in so it's really something where uh it's kind of unique for for us and i, I think every org has their own unique things but as someone who is an owner, a content creator, you know, a, a casual player, I, I, you know, I think that's how I would handle things. Hundred mm-hmm. nice. percent. I, I like to see that because I mean, obviously, personally, I think there's there is a threshold when it comes to like, like obviously, the people that I mean, no disrespect, but the people that might get into awaken like with flying colors, there's gonna be like that step up for them that they're going to have to go to, if they want to go to like hundred thieves or cloud nine, you know, those type of, those type of organizations. So having awaken as that stepping stone, which I love to hear that, like getting a content creator in there, being a part of yeah. a team, use, use either being with awaken for a while or having awaken be their for, first organization. So they know how it all operates and everything. And you being that vehicle almost to help them grow as a creator and as a player in, in, in themselves I think that's an awesome way of approaching it. Um, I hope I hope I didn't say that in a in a disrespect. No, not not at all. And one <laughs> of the things that I think that's also really awesome to hear as of recently, it was is two different things. One, we acquired a, an organization a couple of weeks ago called Rush, and that's where some of our staff and our content creators have come out of. And you know, 
one of the it's one of the things I told them very early on is, you know, I'm not going to come in and acquire you guys and remove, you know, this person and this person who's led you guys, who helped you guys, because that to me is the worst thing that I could possibly do, right? Right. You know, and I brought those people in and I gave them a spot, and then I also said, if you guys need anything, whether it's video editing, whether you need help with this or that, please know I'm here. Like I'm here. You, you know, if you, if, you know, if you guys feel any frustration or any, have any ideas or anything, feel free to message me, mm-hmm. you know, and then uh, on the other end, I think what's also really awesome is that I've had a lot of people coming into the organization from, from other orgs, right. You know, that some of my staff and, and other members know from, and, you know, they'll be like, I had a really bad experience with this organization and you know this person is telling me that awaken's been really good and they've been here long term or um even one of my staff members i won't name who you know he volunteered himself to be up for a two-year staff contract and that to me was like you know like i i take pride in anyone wants to stay long term but when you're volunteering for to be here for two years on a contract i find that to just be like really awesome in knowing that I can count on you and and I think that that shows the mentality that we have at Awaken you know we've had people who are in our group chat who have gone back to 2014 with us um and and so you know it that's and another thing I think that's also special is compared to other orgs right say if you leave the organization or whatever right I have a policy you know and a personal thing within you know myself and the org is that you're part of our family, whether you decide to leave, whether you stay with us. We want you in the in the group chat no matter what, right? So, you know, if, if you leave the org, say, even if you go off to another org, you're, you're still allowed to be in our group chat. Wow. Yeah, most orgs will give that person a boot, like, hey, you got to go. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, I like the way you run. I like the way you run business. I like the way that, uh, you know, you created an organization for other people to get started and stuff. But I got a question about this because a lot of gamers, man, they get rage and stuff. And yeah. I was going to ask you, bro, have you ever, like, picked up a fucking console through it or uh, threw a controller at a TV, punched a TV or anything like that? I'm, I've never punched or, or thrown, any, like, any controllers and stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, my rage is mostly in the verbal trash talking, but um you know i i'm a pretty like contained dude i think the only time you really get me like raging is like if it's been eight or nine times in a row you keep killing me as i'm trying to spawn in you know Mm -hmm. that that's about the only way i think other than that uh the occasional kid sitting in a corner you know inside the building killing you you know but no i've never really like punched you know a monitor or thrown a <laughs> controller you know which, which i it, it's kind of it's kind of like rare you know because you always see people throwing controllers or like you know breaking something and i'm just like yeah you know still got my default xbox one controller <laughs> <laughs> hey so I want to I want to get into I want to get into this Tristan. Obviously you have Awaken, right? But yeah. you have I see you have a, a couple other things yeah. um, that you do. So yeah. first I want to talk about Spark um and then I want to get into your own podcast called Ambition. Um yeah. so let's let's touch on Spark. Um Spark it says um it's a it, it's like a esports and entertainment type of type of strategic company, right? That's yeah. what the bio says. Um yeah. So I guess Within that, what what is Spark? I mean, other than what the bio says. Yeah. So Spark originally start, it was, was a passion project that I started back in 2016, you know, back when I was in high school as a, a consulting agency. Because, you know, to put it into context, right, that was at the point of time where you started seeing millions of dollars coming into space and then this sports team and this business person getting in. And I had the four, I had kind of the forward looking insight to say a lot of small organizations are going to be left in the dust, may not survive if they don't have some help with marketing or, you know, so forth. You know, I, I made it very clear to everyone. I said, look, I run my own organization. I can't fund yours. 
but I can still help out with all these different things, whether it's content, again, marketing, contracts, whatever. So I would, and I think also what I did was really smart was I looked at how much some agencies were charging at the time for services. Some were charging like $300 for just one. Wow. And I undercut them, I, you know, and I told all my clients and said, I will charge you 50 bucks a month for anything that you need per month. You know, n- nothing, uh, you know, I said, if anything gets added on, you know, to the service list, it goes straight to that, fit, you know, into that 50 bucks. And, you know, we worked with a ton of small organizations, Amethyst, you know, obviously Awaken. Uh, we worked with some other ones in the space for quite some time. And then in 2018, there was this kind of rush of LinkedIn experts getting into esports. And, you know, Jared, I'm sure you saw a lot of people were giving, you know, experiences that really made consulting feel like it was on the climb, right? That it was less genuine that in trying to help people than, you know, more about now just making money for the sake of it, right? There's some guy on Twitter I saw the other day who, you know, he tried to get a position as an esports consultant and then realized that it literally holds no weight in esports, um, <laughs> you know. And wow. so, you know, at that time, I had already graduated. This was probably the summer of 2018. And I said, you know, I don't want to end this project, but what can I do to make it, you know, last a little bit longer and, and scale it? And so I turned it into a parent or a holding company of sorts where I said, This is my sandbox, whatever I want to create, whatever I want to do with it. You know, I have no investors. I have nobody else running this besides me. And so I started with Awaken. I started with my personal podcast or uh, not podcast. I started with my channel Awaken, my personal production studio. And then now uh, to this point, we've grown it to 10 plus businesses. Sheesh. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, within esports, obviously, like a lot of most of it is digital for the amateur, yeah. for, for the for the up and coming and even for most of the established um, organizations. So um, obviously your digital presence is probably should be your first priority, right? For for any organization yeah. that's looking to at least gain a fan base for for their thing. So um, I guess, I guess since you've worked with those companies, what's the, what's the best experience or what, what's the, what's the biggest company you've worked with with Spark? The biggest company I've worked with is Spark. You know, that's a, that's a tough one. I'd have to get back to you on that one. Cause <laughs> it, like there, there were a lot of teams back in the day that we worked with. There were a lot of companies that we helped people get sponsorships with and partnerships with and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, I'd have to, to like, I guess, kind of look back through the crates and, and find that out for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, no, no worries if it's not at the top of your head. No worries. No worries yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's, let's get into it, right? Let's get into the Ambition Podcast, right? I've seen yeah. you, you've been running this for a while. Obviously, this, yeah. this correlates to what we're doing here. So I wanted to leave it for probably one of the last things um, about you personally that we're going to talk about. So what is the ambition podcast? I see you posting about it all the time. I see you recently started getting episodes out again, which is awesome. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so kind of give us the rundown, give the people the rundown. So I had always done podcasts, um, you know, growing in, in the space. I think, you know, some of the earliest podcasts I did was actually I did, it was the gamer boy podcast with who ended up being Carl Jacobs. Um, before anybody knew who Carl Jacobs was, really. And, and so uh, it was him and one of his friends. And, you know, I've been a guest on their podcast a couple of times. And I had ran a podcast way back in the day called uh, Infinity Unfiltered. And it was me really just ranting and exposing a lot of organizations out there for doing really scummy or shady things or companies that were doing really uh, terrible things and, gi- and giving people kind of a I, I'd say a non-drama like you know experience of understanding these things and, and so forth mm-hmm. especially from the context of someone who is an owner compared to like Keemstar mm-hmm. um, and so 
you know, what, what I ended up doing was I got a couple episodes into that and then SoundCloud, um, I think SoundCloud did something with their membership stuff and that just made it for me where I was like, I can't really keep doing this. And what happened with the, or what started with the Ambition pro, uh, podcast was um, I'd always wanted to really do a podcast, you know, my own podcast for mm-hmm. a while because, you know, I, I wanted to do something where I thought it was really nice. And, you know, the Hex Porters was popping up. Um, I think, I, I don't know if the Courage and Nade Shot show had started necessarily when we started. I, I, I can check on that. But in, in terms of things, I wanted something where, you know, you could listen to people in the industry or even in some related area and get to know about them and what they do. And that kind of ties into the, the, the meaning of ambition, right? What is your ambition? Why, you know, what led you to the point where you are today and, and everything, you know, what drives you? And so, you know, that, that's what kind of kicked it off. And then I started, you know, doing episodes with people that I, I personally have known. And even now these days, I've ventured out to, to people that are, you know, more experienced in the industry than I am and getting those people on and, and this and that, and even, you know, getting into sports and and music and so forth. And so um, for me, I think, you know, we're, we're 20 episodes in, you know, we've, we've always kind of taken like, I I think we've taken like a couple breaks at times Mm -hmm. and that's really for two reasons. One to adjust because, um, you know the week to week format i always feel like has kind of been just a really daunting thing to do and then on top of that i i feel like there's a little bit of suspense that you can leave hanging like when's the next episode gonna drop and then you know it drops with this big huge guest like you know i think we hadn't done a podcast since um I'm, i'm trying to think you know we we hadn't done really a podcast like the second half of the year. And then, you know, our, our first podcast coming back, I talked to the former president of the record label that has a lot of my favorite bands signed to it. So, you know, we, we came out the gates pretty quick with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that, that's what the podcast is. You know, again, you know, and fun enough, we're on Spotify, we're on Google. Uh, I always, I always mock Apple, you know, I, I used to have an, uh, an iPhone, but now like whenever uh, I, I talk about where people can find it, you know, I just say Apple podcast has left the chat, you know? <laughs> I mean, it, it's awesome to see you have like some of the guests, um, like, uh, especially Sid, I th- or no, you weren't talking about Sid. You were talking about Jenny, right? You were talking about yeah. Jenny reader. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, I was looking back on I'm on your Twitter page right now for ambition. I'm yeah. seeing the people that you've had on. You have some some high profile people on for some for some decent sized companies. And that's that's awesome that you got yeah. that you have that. Um I feel like I feel like the thing the thing with an esports podcast like like yours is um I feel like getting those guests and getting getting some guests that actually have some some f- like their foot in the door, or have some leverage behind the industry that you're in. Um, is probably one of the toughest parts of, of having that podcast, especially um, when some guests, at least it, for us, like when I'm reaching out to some people for guests, they ask what our listenership is, um, yeah, everything like that. So getting those, those people on, um, especially when it, for a small scale podcast is, is pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, I think we've always done pretty well, you know, with, with the podcast guests that we have, and, you know, I, I think what's really nice is that this is kind of, again, my passion project. I'm the one who, who sked, who searches out for guests, who, you know, schedules, who records, who edits, who uploads everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I, you know, I always kind of look at who is this guest? Do I think that they're a great person? You know, not, not to say that not, you know, that everyone I, I talk to is, is awesome. There are people who, I'd love to have on the podcast who have never gone back to me um, that I think people would love to talk to or, mm-hmm. or hear from. Um, but 
you know, that that's, a, that's the thing for me. You know, I think the, the podcast is something really, you know, fun and awesome. You know, I hope to see it get to 100 episodes someday. Um, and, and, you know, who, who knows what, what might happen by then, you know. Um, but, yeah, you know, the podcast is, is something fun. And I, and I think a lot of people hopefully will enjoy it um you know and or i hope people do enjoy it sorry Mm -hmm. um but you know right now we're we're on a little bit of hiatus just because we're trying to get some old episodes out and and trying to redo graphics right now um Mm -hmm. but i think also what we've kind of done is we've really defined i think even from the beginning of the podcast i've defined it as this isn't just the place for esports podcast this is you know, the home for all things business, music, esports, and gaming. Mm-hmm. So, nice. you know, 100%. because I, I feel like when you just focus on esports, it makes it so hard. And then, you know, you either have to go down the road of ESP and esports, which failed, you know, or, you know, you really have to find some way to do different. But I, I think that we kind of found a, or that I've kind of found a good way to handle things. Mm -hmm. nice okay Tristan um man one thing I want to ask you is because you know we we're we're on our podcast obviously and I have a dream guest man if we got Will Smith on here (laughs) to hear him talk about his stories his life uh like what how he was thinking about certain movies and stuff but who was that dream guest that you would love to have on the ambition podcast that you would love to pick the hell out their brain and have a good ass podcast with Ooh, that's a that that's a tough one. I mean, there's a couple different names. Um, you know, like the the three that would come to mind are like um Joe Rogan, Elon hey. Musk, or Logic. Those are the three that I would really like hone in on because you know, for me, I mean, you know, you can't go wrong with a conversation with Joe Rogan, you know, you can't. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, logic, I, I listen to logic's you know, earlier stuff before he even got, you know, the, the record deal. Um, and then, you know, I mean, Elon Musk, you know, there, no need to explain there, you know, yeah, like, you ain't gotta explain nothing about him. You know, <laughs> um, but no, I think, you know, and I think it'd be interesting to, to interview those three people, uh, for, for my podcast. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, if anyone in, in their circles are listening, like, Hey, um yeah you know, hopefully y'all know where to find me but yeah i mean the best thing about having a podcast i mean you could just literally go on here sharing your thoughts i mean i know marcellus and i are loving doing this i mean we started back in november with this and um we're already i mean obviously this is what what did what did we say 24 at the 24, beginning right? like 24. kobe Bryant, yeah. baby and um at the time of recording we have 21 episodes live um, we released episode 21 yesterday. Um, but, but I mean, like it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a platform where you can talk about, I mean, obviously you got to stay on a, on a decent overarching, I guess, broad topic sense, but, um, or industry sense, but it, it's just nice to have a platform to, to share, share some thoughts and have genuine yeah. conversations with people. And, you know, especially, I mean, in the time that we're in now, we don't get a lot of potentially, People yeah. don't get a lot of, you know, con- long conversations like they used to have because of, I mean, this, that, and the other thing. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I know I look forward to it every, every week when, when Marcellus and I jump on, uh, jump on Wednesdays and Saturdays yeah. um, to get an episode out, you know, it, it's nice to have a conversation and meet, meet someone new potentially. And, and, you know, just, just have a nice time and share, share thoughts and opinions. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, I, I think, um, I, I think the, you know, the last year, year and a half has just been crazy, you know, when, when it comes down to it with this whole pandemic and, and everything, mm-hmm. um, you know, because even myself, I was planning on going to events and concerts and festivals and then oh, like, man, tell me about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I re- one of the best concerts I was supposed to go to, um, that probably this lineup will never happen again in my existence was Ice Nine Kills, I Prevail, Papa Roach, and Five Finger Death Punch were the headliners. Um, and, you know, I was going to fly out to go to it, you know, and three weeks before the thing, it literally got canceled. 
and I was like, I hate you all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think my girlfriend and I we were gonna go to a Logic concert, and then it got canceled. That was the only time that that experience has happened. But but yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 well, nice to even have to have some sort of sort of platform to get back to normalcy, almost, you know. Was Logic doing planning concerts last year? I, I thought he wasn't. That may not have been last year. It may have been a little bit earlier. I think it was. It was in. It was actually in the winter, if I remember correctly. Um, it didn't. It didn't have to do with COVID. It just had to do with you know. You were talking about concerts getting canceled and, and everything well, like I, that. So well, it was man. The reason concerts were getting canceled for for me was because of the pandemic. Yeah, that's. Yeah, for for me it was um I think he said he was sick. It was supposed to be in Milwaukee. Okay. And um and we were going to drive down for the night, have the concert and then unfor- unfortunately we were going to have to drive back cuz we had things to do the next day, but yeah, yeah it would have been an awesome experience. It would have been insane. Yeah, I've been to a couple of his concerts. I think one time um I mean and you know, for me one of the things is um I love being close to the stage, but at the same time I know when I probably shouldn't be. So the first concert I went to, um, I think I was in like the the lower, you know, pit type of, of it, you know, at mm-hmm. an amphitheater. And I just decided, yeah, you know what, I, I'm good. I'm going to be like here in the middle, just chilling, just, you know, hanging out and everything. Uh, plus, you know, that gave me a chance to get like better video and better shots of, of the concert and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, I think the second one I had floor seats actually. You know, they weren't like up towards the stage; they were like middle of the arena. Right. Um, but the only reason that I, um, that I ended up like giving up those seats and moving up to the, like the seats and stuff from where one of my friends was with his family, was because the the kids in front of me were from like. A high school in that area and they were just genuinely being assholes and i was just like yeah no i'm like <laughs> you know when you're talking to someone like that i'm like dude i don't want to hear your shit i'm good <laughs> like that's true plus I, didn't, I don't think i paid that much money for the ticket anyways i think i paid you know i, I forget what i paid but um you know i i think you know i'm, I'm looking forward to concerts looking forward to festivals, looking forward to all that type of stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple that I've kind of, I, I've kind of given my, my, my pre-signature on that where I'm like, I will be there, mm-hmm. because, you know, because I had some like bands and their management reach out and they're like, hey, we can refund you if you want, or you can save it till, you know, whenever we have our, our next tours. And I'm like, save it, just save mm-hmm. it. And I'm like, Email me whenever, like email me whenever they're back up and running. But you know, I'm like, don't want the refund because mm-hmm. that you know I think that that's it. Also, really hurts the musicians. I right? you know like there was one band during the pandemic I heard about right right as the pandemic hit here in the states, they were on tour. They were four what they were four shows and had to cancel and had a merch debt because of it of twenty six thousand dollars. And I was just like, I don't want to see anybody go through that, mm-hmm. um, especially Dang. bands that I love, you know, or mm-hmm. musicians that I love. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, you know, the podcast for me, I think everything I do is is fun. Um, but you know, that it's the the daily life of just you know trying to overachieve. Hundred <laughs> percent, I definitely feel that. Definitely feel that. You guys make me feel like I don't get out enough. I've never <laughs> been to a concert. I've never been to a festival. I lived literally like a few blocks away from Bonnaroo. I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's like a festival in Manchester, Tennessee, out in a big ass field. A lot of artists and stuff come. Yeah. Travis Scott's been there. Kanye West has been there. ASAP Rock. All, all these big name artists. But I didn't have to go because I remember literally like sitting in my room here in Post Malone. And just hearing the music just yeah, you're and you're just like, like why do I need to pay the fifty bucks for this ticket? Like it's literally five, like I can 
like set up a chair outside and just listen to it. <laughs> well, it's not even just that. It's the fact that, you know, maybe it's because I didn't have the right type of friends to go to a festival with. And also, like, I'm not really big into, like, drugs and stuff. So, like, that's what most yeah. people do when they go to Bonnaroo and these festivals. They get all fucked up on, you know, all these different drugs and go ham and go crazy. But um, yeah. the closest thing that I've ever been to a concert was out there in uh, L.A. We was out there at Venice Beach, and they were playing, like, techno music, and everybody was dancing. So I'm out there. Yeah. but um guys we got to go to a festival one day because i don't know like here lately like i just i feel like i'm in the mood for one i want to go to a festival have a good ass time this covid19 has shut us down we ain't be able to go nowhere bro i I can tell you i I can tell you this as someone who's originally from los angeles we don't consider techno music to be music (laughs) Like, it's I like, like techno. <laughs> it's like Dub said, nobody loves it. It's like we tolerate yeah. it, but no one really loves it. Right. <laughs> um, All right. So, cool so, too. so I want to finish off with um with something that we usually ask people when they when they own their own when they own their own their own organization. What? Where do you see yourself? Usually, it's Marcellus asking this question. Where do you see yourself in the next three to five years with Awaken, or with yourself personally? So when my st- I'll answer both those because again those are good questions. So in three years or so, um, hopefully you know I'm this summer I'm starting going back to college, getting my two year degree at least in business. Um, so hopefully within the next couple of years I'll I'll have that done. You know, in in two years as well, Awaken will turn ten years old, which wow. again makes me feel old. Um, you know, Jared, feel free to always give me shit every year. Be like, Hey, you know, happy nine year, happy 10th year. (laughs) Um, but I think professionally, you know, with, with awaken at least, um, you know, I, I I don't know, you know, uh, uh, I used to be able to predict the things that would happen. And now I just kind of, I'm along for the ride to see where things go. I think what's really nice is that um while awaken focuses on esports it's not the only thing that we want to focus on you know we do content um we recently got you know uh, a music producer that in montage editor so that you know that's a really great thing um but I, I i don't know you know i i think you know hopefully you know you'll see us on a main stage somewhere some game you know wh- whatever it may be mm-hmm. who knows um but overall you know i'm just along for the journey you know what and and you know hoping the the future looks right i mean i i plan to run a late awaken for as long as i can um you know with myself at the helm because you know it's i i think after so many years of running it you know with with myself at, at the helm of it no other owners no other people um taking credit for running the thing um it, it just makes it so much more nicer to and more fulfilling mm-hmm. i mean um again you know that you know i, I don't want to take all the credit because the, the staff that i have currently and a fair good amount of the staff that i've had in the past you know there's been some some bad apples in that bunch you know uh, of great people that i've had in staff and players and and all that but you know, I would say, you know, it, it's the members, the staff, the, the players, et cetera, that, that help me be the best that I can be. Mm-hmm. 100%. Five, nice five answer. years from now, got, I mean, five years from now is a very long time, but. Um, hey, it ain't that long. Yeah. Think, think, think back think five. Think about the last five. Think about yeah, the last five. <laughs> think back Rock five up. years. That shit passed like a snap of a finger, my man. Yeah, you know, just get get Thanos snapped five years into the future. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, you know, I I don't know. For five years from now, you know, I mean, I wouldn't rem- I wouldn't mind retiring before I'm thirty. You know, shit. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind it, but um, you know, I think that that'd be an unrealistic goal. You know, mm. uh, I I think for me, my you know my 
my five year plan is just to be the bit the best role model, the best owner, the best person I can be. Hundred mm, percent. I respect the shit out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, dang, Christian, it's been it's been awesome having you on the podcast. It was good to get to get, I guess, a different industry guest on. Um, yeah. We haven't had a person that's been in esports yet. Um, I mean, I've, I'm a designer in esports, but no one on here really knows that. Um, so yeah. it was awesome to have someone to kind of, to kind of lighten up the subject matter a little bit. So again, I, I thank you for coming on. Um, I hope you had an awesome time. Did you have an awesome time? I did. You know, <laughs> you know like, thank, you know, first off, I mean, you're, you know, you and I go back, what I want to say six years or something like that. Yep. So, you know, I think you were one of Awakens first designers to, to actually be honest uh which is it's crazy you know um I, i'm sure i stressed the shit out of you back then uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know even, even while being um very like uh open on, on creative and stuff i feel mm-hmm. i definitely apologize if i ever like stressed the shit out of you for something <laughs> or because I'm sure I did. You know, it's I, it's I'm, my job. It's my job, man. It's my job, and it it was also your job. So no worries, no worries at all. Yeah. Um. But no, I mean, you know, thank you for having me on the podcast and, and everything. You know, I love coming on and talking to people and and sharing my story, the story of Awaken. You know, because I feel like uh, eventually, once I get good enough at video editing and producing, maybe I'll do it uh the story of awaken or something mm-hmm. like that. you should but yeah you should i i probably would i do you know just you know it takes so much time and you know the the hard thing is when you don't have a lot of the things from back then like backed up or anything it just makes it so much harder to 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 get all those nice little things mm-hmm. um but no, I mean, again, you know, really appreciate you having me on the podcast. De- you know, I definitely got to get you to return the favor and come on to, to mine, um, or at least get both of you maybe on, you know, on, on my podcast. That would be um, good. Yeah, we would be more than be happy, good. more than happy to do that for you. But yeah, what I, one of the things I think that's also ironic is that this episode is number 24, which is also one of my favorite television shows of all time. Um, <laughs> hey, awesome! Also, also like, Kobe Bryant's twenty four, so you know that's like my favorite. Uh, player I mean, you know, yes, I'm from <laughs> yes, I'm from LA, but you know, I wasn't necessarily a Kobe fan for. A, oh a man, you from LA? Okay, so <laughs> you probably you probably a Clippers fan then. No, no, no. I was Shaq, baby. All the oh, way. okay. I can respect that. I can respect that. Shaq was the <laughs> shit, man. Even though he couldn't hit a free throw to save his dang life. Um, <laughs> I, I did have one question I was going to ask you, but we really, I guess we don't have enough time. No, no, nah, nah, ask it. Like, okay, so, you know, gaming is getting advanced as hell. And uh, I was wondering, do you think the game is going to be like that, that movie called uh, Player One? Where people are putting on goggles and masks and like they're actually like in the game instead of you know just controlling the player that's a good question <laughs> what's funny is i was actually talking to someone about this last night you know yeah like we were joking about ready player one i was like oh or or no so someone had mentioned something about cyberpunk i was like oh isn't that ready player one in video game form like honestly uh but you know like no, I would love for that to happen, you know, where there's no like VR aspect or something like that, you know, some something where like you could step into like a like a, a booth or something or a pod or you know, whatever it may be. You know, maybe virtual reality is probably the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. But where, you know, you can be as immersive as you want and all these different things and I think that that would be a really cool game. I mean, you know, uh, if someone did it correctly, you know, yeah, and I, I, that's I, right, I, you know, correctly. Um, but in, in terms of things, I, I'd love to see it happen. You know, I, I mean, I'd be one of the first people to play that game if it, if it ever <laughs> did happen. Uh, because, you know, as an Xbox player, I'm, I'm spited by the fact that one of my favorite games um, to watch is Detroit Become Human. And I can't play it because it's a PlayStation exclusive. Damn. <laughs> You gotta switch. You, know, you gotta get to a Sony. You gotta get your PS Five as well, just so you can play it. No, I, I, I probably would never get a PlayStation. Like, 
you know, if someone had had told me, if someone you know gave me the choice between like death and getting a PlayStation Five, I'd be like, I choose death. <laughs> oh my god! It ain't even that bad, bro. It ain't even that bad. Get out of here. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> what? I mean, you know, it ain't that bad. It ain't that. Well, you, you have to say, look at Xbox it from this context. <laughs> you, have, you have to look at it from this context. I've been playing on Xbox since the original like Xbox. Oh and my god, that's true. so long ago. There, there is some bias there. There's some bias. Yeah. So, well, that's right. I, I don't see it as bias. I see it as one is the better console that had to walk and for the for the other one to sprint. Mm. Okay. You know, also you got to think about it for quite some time. While they had Detroit Become Human, we had GTA for free through Game Pass. That's true. It's very true. He's dropping the facts on the games right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I think one of the other games I played on on Xbox that I'm sure some people will either I raise me for. Or say I am an idiot for it is I played CSGO on console for many years. Oh, I don't know about that one, big guy. CSGO. On <laughs> so I don't, I don't. I don't think. I don't think anyone's ever even thought of playing CSGO on console. I think you might you be. Able, I I've never heard of that before. You you can. I'll, I'll send it to you just to, to show you that it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no way I didn't. Oh, I don't. Think yeah. I don't think that should even be allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how I got my collegiate gaming scholarship, to be completely honest. Oh, my. Oh, shoot. You got a collegiate gaming scholarship? Oh, yeah, my God. I, I, I didn't know that I was, was a thing. Be, I was going to be a student staff member. And then, you know, right before I did a college trip, they were, you know, they called me and said, hey, we got a new esports director and he needs someone to, or he wants everybody, whether you're staff or not, to play a certain game. I was like, well, and to put this in the context, this was, again, 2018. I was like, well, collegiate Call of Duty doesn't exist. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure, you you know, your university board's not going to let you do this. And I'd have to find players to do it. And, you know, I mean, CDL, you know, the yeah, the CDL still, or no, not CDL, the Call of Duty World League still existed at that time. Mm -hmm. So, getting people to go from semi-pro orgs to a college would be like what like no yeah uh, whereas <laughs> now that's happening because people realize it's probably smart to do it um because you can get free you can get a scholarship for it they're treating them like athletes like real athletes which is well, awesome it's a lot of these private universities though that are still going to screw you over right like that's true that's with anything you know like i you had did. i mean i the school i went to i loved it or the school that I toured, I loved it. You know, it was in downtown Chicago. I loved it. Um, you know, really great. You know, I mean, again, I was talking to the associate associate esports director and and all these different things over the phone. So, you know, I had, you know, the I, I was pitching ideas. I was talking about what I would do. You know, one of the, the ideas that I had that I've not seen a lot of people do. And even some people have turned down the idea of even doing is being a staff member while running it as semi pro org. And then once that person graduates, signing them to a contract with that org. Like, you know, mm-hmm. that, I feel like if anyone did that, uh, and you know, feel free to, to take this idea, just know that if I see it, I'm going to know. Uh, <laughs> I'll know, you know, but. Um, no, I think, you know, for me, it, it would have been fun, but my, my family convinced me to stay here in Nebraska, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't know Marcel was going to bring up another question, but dang, that was a good man, question. Man, I still got another <laughs> one, man. I was going to ask you, like, who, who makes more, uh, esports competitor or a gaming, uh, streamer? Oh, um, that's a tough one. I think it depends um, on the game. Yeah. Depends on the game and the team. I mean, obviously, it depends. Like, well, well let, not only that, but let's, also let's go like Let's go, like, top-tier player versus top-tier content creator. Right. That, yeah, that's, that's but, the best But not only it. that, you also have to value in everyone's individual brand value, their likeness, their image. What, you know, what, like, you know, comparing, 
you know, let's say um, Krimzix to, you know, a top Fortnite player, or, or maybe, you know, it might be the same in some ways, but like, it, you know, it's like comparing, you know, from a sports thing, it's like comparing Tom Brady to, you know, uh, Trevor Lawrence coming into the NFL. You know, Ooh. he's like, it, it's it, it's not a, a one-to-one comparison. I feel, I feel like it's, com- well, yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yes, I jumped the gun. Yeah, it makes sense because nah, nah, yeah. one of them is like you're you're really in that shit. Like this is competitive. Like this is what we do. We come to shoot niggas up and do our thing. But the other one is, hey, I'm on a stream. I can kind of make it entertaining. I can have fun well, with it. And so like, you know. so, and there, there's more there's more monetary there's more no- monetary dynamic when you're a content creator, right? Because you know a good example for the CDL, right? A lot of people thought franchising will call these gonna be a great thing. However, like, if you want to speak your mind, if you want to say your thoughts, even if they're negative of a league, you're going to get fined, you know? Oh, shoot. Like, there's mm-hmm. a player, um, and I'm sure, Jared, you know who I'm talking about, who literally said he got fined more money than what the organization brought in through the entire first season of the franchise. Dang. Yeah, he was broke, broke. <laughs> you know, like. They were throwing ten thousand dollar fines at him, or they were throwing fines if you left the press conference early. Like it was, I mean, they're they were treating it just like just like regular regular sports, you know. Like yeah. players, player in their contract, players have an obligation that says if they get called for a press conference, they have to do the whole press conference. That's mm-hmm. li- that's literally what became like what com- what came of Marshawn Lynch saying, "I'm just here so I don't get fined." That that was true. Yeah, it's a hundred percent true. Like there's an obligation. So yeah, you know, like if they break that, if they break contract, they're going to get fined. That is what it is, you know, but it would be sometimes like calling out like Activision or the studio. Oh, get fined. Or, you know, I mean, th- there were a numerous amount of different things. Like I, but you got to, you got to think though. You got to think though. Or, like, the, or like what happened Activision, with Star- like what happened with Stump when happened with a normal player, right? You know, and the context of this is that um, Stump had done a, it was on a non-related CDL stream on his own personal thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. He ran an ad for Raid Shadow Legends and they, they find him for that, right? Because that was a personal sponsorship that he got on his own time, but because it's made by a mobile developer that's not Activision, they hit him. Damn. Like, you know. He was still, yeah, he was still. It's all, it's all contractual, bro. It's all contractual. I, I mean, I would love to see what those contracts are like, you know, but I, I, I'm fearful of what those contracts look like. As someone who's seen contracts in esports enough times to, to literally like want to cry for hours about how bad they are, it, it would not surprise me, you know. Um, cause well, I, you, got, you got to think of it though. Like if, if you were working at a nine to five, right. You're working at like your office job and you start slandering your boss and your boss hears about it. And it's like to the point where it affects the, the direct performance of the company or affects well, people's opinion on the company. You know, you're probably going to get let go or you're, you're going to get a pay cut or, you know, it's, it's, there's direct correlation to that. Like, I think, for, for I think me, when players get fined, like, especially in real sports, like I, when they, when they talk yeah. shit about like the NFL or the MLB, like that's their literal employer, you know, that's their literal employer. I mean, for, for me, sport. I look at it a little bit different where, you know, if, if someone's talking, you know, if someone who is playing or creating content or so forth, or is a part of this league that I, you know, if I'm running, say if I'm the commissioner and I see that you're talking shit, I'm not going to find you. I'm going to say, hey, I hear you. What can we do to fix this? Right? Because finding it only makes the situation worse. Right? You know, it makes it go from a less productive and more constructive, you know, approach to, hey, you know, if we say, if you say anything, if you do anything we don't agree with, we're just going to hit you with a fine. You know? Yeah, and but I mean, that, it's it's, that just it's not the, in the silence then, you know, because yeah, it, it's, like, it's just it's just not the player's choice then, you know, they have to if once they sign a contract, they have to abide by the contract. And if they don't, it's 
fine. So like, I know. I, I'm just saying what, what I would is. do from, from my perspective. You know, if I yeah. was commissioner of the league, I wouldn't find anyone because, you know, I you know how 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 are you supposed to make a league for players be better? If, if you know if player like sorry, how is how is finding a you know a player in your league going to do better if the player is criticizing the way that the league is currently, right? You know, you can fix it and, you know, that player might be happy, you know, and, and everything. Or, you know, find the person and then just, you know, you make everyone else feel like, oh, my God, if I say something very similar to what Jared said or to this person said, I'm going to get fined, you know. That's true. And, you and make so, a good point. You know, that that's how I look. I mean, because, you know, especially like as someone who has literally allowed members in my organization to have a voice over decisions and stuff like you know your league is you know your league your company or whatever is because you have people working for you that are helping to grow the company mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. you know it, you know it, it's as simple as having a town hall meeting on on zoom or something else and going okay or or a player summon going look we know there's issues. We don't want to find anybody. We don't want the, you know, to have any issues. What, what are your grievances? What issues do you guys have and how can we help fix them? Mm-hmm. You make a good point. You do make a good point. You know, I, I mean, you know, I, I come from an aspect of looking at it where it's like, and, and, and you know, to, to tie this all back in, you know, to, to the original question, right. You, you know, you don't have those issues as a streamer. All you have to worry about is, your revenue, your content, that's it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I can guarantee you Ninja is making more money he ever did with Luminosity or Aeolus and the guys at 1% are making more money than they ever did working at Obey. You know, um, you know, because like what Ninja, when he got out of the mixer deal, got paid like $20 million, I think. That was Sheesh. Well. Like that's what was left on his contract. I think they were going to try to get him over to Facebook Gaming. He said, "No, I want out. Shroud wants out. Buy us out." And Microsoft literally paid both of them twenty million to shut up. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. Um, that's, that's when you know you're good. <laughs> well, I mean, they got good management. Don't get me wrong. You know, they got good like agents and stuff working for them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I mean, you know, in terms of things you know it's it's kind of just crazy you know the the way things are i think that and i always kind of look at it again you know from the perspective of i try to create equal value for both a content creator or a player right you know coming into even my organization i tell people if you're thinking about that you expect a salary coming into my org you're not going to get one i literally just posted something about this on twitter the other day where um, what, what was it that I said? And I'm surprised that I didn't get a lot of people actually reading this, um, because I felt that the, the context of what I was trying to say actually made sense. Let me, let me see if I can find it here. Um, what, what I, what I had wrote was, um, Jesus, we're, we're, what I said is, you know, stop giving players a, a, an amateur or semi-pro level salaries automatically, right? If you compare it to collegiate sports, those who are walk-on players have to work hard, they grind, they practice, and they pay their way, but they grind. And for me, it's much more fulfilling in my eyes to have someone come in with no expectation of a salary and, you know, have, and, and over time creates that mentality of, if I want that salary, I'm, let me work hard to go get that salary. Not, okay, I might be a top, you know, 100 player in the world in Fortnite or Call of Duty. I expect I'm getting a salary. So that, that was my hot take. Of, you know, I, I had some hot takes eventually on Twitter from time to time, but that was one where I just had to, like, lay in across. Now, you know, there there's examples that probably if you are a player that people recognize and have a big fan base, then maybe, yes, the salary is worth it, right? But, you know, giving $200 a month to an amateur team or $300 a month to a CSGO, you know, top, you know, or or advanced team or something like that, to me, you know, that's not worth it. 
you know, because you're not, also, you're not going to make your money back. Mm-hmm. You know, Thanks. but yeah, you know, it, it, the, I, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, over time though, streamers, their value is going to be worth more than creators, right? You know, even Nate tried to said that if Scump were to retire and just go to making content, he would be more, he would be like more. Um, he'd, be, he'd be better off. He'd be yeah. He'd be financially, like he, he'd be better off now yeah. or better off later if he was a content creator than he is. Well, not now. even that, but like so, like for instance, right when he did his first stream he'd be back, making more. When when Scum did his first stream back after like a year or so, like what over forty thousand or actually I forget what the number were, but it was at least like thirty thousand people showed up into his stream. Mm-hmm. You, you know which. To me, I'm like, you know, when when you have not streamed for a year and you have that growth, like imagine that was day by day, you know, if you were Ninja or Nick Mertz and that, you know, I mean, Scump, I would say is bigger than Nick Mertz as is, you know, but, um, Mm. but yeah, you know, that's, that's from my perspective. I think, and also I just think you're able to get more sponsorships, you know, for yourself when you're a content creator. Versus if you're a player with an organization, because then, you know, there's all these conflicts of interest, all these, well, Mm -hmm. this org has this and that. I mean, for me, I've always kind of told people, like, look, if you had a sponsorship with this company and you really love it, like, you know, drink it when you're not doing stuff for my org. But if you're doing, whenever you're doing stuff for my org, I need you to rep this sponsor, you know, right. I mean, you know, for me, like I'm, you know, Awakened sponsored by Juggernaut. Here I am drinking the Mountain Dew, you know. So, the, you know that that's the the big things I would say. Yeah. Well, dang. I mean, this we went on a good one. Yeah, yeah. We, we went on a little bit longer than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I felt the intent, the tent, the tenacity, like raising up too at the end when you guys are going in about the fines and stuff. I'll just sit back, just watch it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean. You know, I, I mean, the, the, the person in me is like, well, hey, you know, special guest, special episode. Why not make it a little bit longer, I guess? You know, that wasn't my intention, but hey, like we can spin that, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, in, in terms of things, you know, again, you know, I appreciate you guys having me on and, and everything. Mm-hmm. 100%. Marcellus, why don't you hit us with the intro and then we can close it out. Or the outro. Sorry, outro. Why did I say intro? <laughs> All right, guys. That was episode 24 of the podcast. Um, look, go ahead and follow my guy, Tristan, on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, tune into his podcast, Ambition Podcast. Uh, also, give us a like. Give us a, uh, give us a comment below. Subscribe. And uh, make sure you guys are ready for the next podcast. It's going to be fire just like this one. And, uh, yeah, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Peace, y'all.